Could VAR be scrapped from England's top flight division going forward? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yesterday's video is going to centre around the big breaking news tonight. Broken by the Athletics' David Ornstein that states that Wolverhampton Wanderers have put a proposal forward to the Premier League to scrap VAR and that the Premier League clubs are set to vote on this proposal as to whether or not to keep it or to scrap it going forward in England's top flight division. Of course, Wolves have been affected very heavily this season, as I'll have a lot of teams, but Wolves in particular have been affected negatively in this way, and they have decided to put forward a proposal to scrap and ban VAR in its entirety. Uh, going forward and in order for this bill to be to be granted in order for the green light to be given on this there needs to be a acceptance of this from 14 at the very least 14 of the 20 Premier League teams to be participating in England's top flight division for next season we're going to be talking about VAR, we're going to be talking about the usage of it, we're going to be talking about whether this is a good proposal, bad proposal and everything else in between. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both films are always incredibly greatly appreciated. And of course, get involved in the comment section. I know that this is a very controversial and very debatable topic. So I want to know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on this. I'm sure it'll all make for great and interesting reading down below. So please do get involved and tell me what you think about this potential proposal that could get the green light for future seasons to come um, but without further ado let's talk about the most device uh, divisive and most controversial three letters in the in in football as, as a whole v a r David Ornstein, like I say, broke the news tonight. He said exclusive Premier League clubs to vote on proposal to scrap VAR from next season. Resolution formally submitted by Wolves to abolish system and will be on the agenda at June the 6th. Any rule change needs two-thirds majority, that's 14 of the 20 members, to pass, says The Athletic and David Ornstein. The pro the um, uh, Let me just bring it up here. There was a statement put out as well. Uh, Wolves have formally submitted a resolution to the Premier League to trigger a vote to the league's AGM in June on the removal of VAR from the start of the 2024-25 season. The introduction of VAR in 2019-2020 was a decision made in good faith and with the best interests of football and the Premier League at its heart. However, it has led to numerous unintended negative consequences that are damaging the relationship between fans and football and undermining the value of the Premier League brand, which include impact on goal celebrations and the spontaneous passion that makes football special, frustration and confusion inside stadiums due to lengthy VAR checks and poor communication, a more hostile atmosphere with protests, booing of the Premier League anthem and chants against VAR, Overreach of VAR's original purpose to correct clear and obvious mis to, to correct VAR, uh, clear and obvious mistakes. Now overanalyzing subjective decisions and compromising the the game's fluidity and integrity. Diminished accountability of the on-field officials due to safety net of VAR, leading to an erosion of authority on the pitch. Continued errors despite VAR with supporters unable to accept human error after multiple views and replays damaging confidence in officiating standards. Disruption of the Premier League's fast pace with lengthy VAR checks and more added time causing matches to run excessively long. Constant discourse about VAR's decisions often overshadowing the match itself and tarnishing the reputation of the league. Erosion of trust and reputation with VAR fueling complete uh, completely nonsensical allegations of corruption the decision to table the resolution has come after careful consideration and with the utmost respect for the premier league pgmol and our fellow competitors there is no blame to be placed we are all just looking for the best possible outcome for football and all stakeholders have been working hard to try and make the introduction of additional technology a success However, after five seasons of VAR in the Premier League, it is time for a constructive and critical debate on its future. Our position is that the price we are paying for a small increase in accuracy is at odds with the spirit of the game. And as a result, we should remove it from the 2024-25 season onwards. 
a very, very well thought out, a very well put together statement by Wolverhampton Wanderers there in terms of their proposal to ban VAR. Now, let me just say this. I agree with a lot of what was said there. And I think that going forward, a lot of what was said will be changed. For example, the introduction of semi-automated technology for calling offsides, I think will eradicate a lot of time being wasted on checking if someone's toenail, for example, is in an offside position or not. I think that will... Uh, that will help towards the mistake. I agree with a lot of what was said, though. Other than that, I agree with the fact that there doesn't seem to be enough communication between whether you're watching at home, whether you're watching in the stadium. It's all a big secret for no apparent reason other than the fact to be very annoying. So I 100% understand where they're coming from with a lot of these things. And I get that it ruins the spontaneity of it, the kind of you can't over celebrate when a goal goes in in the moment you have to be kind of prepared for oh what if var gets involved and then they over analyze it and it takes about five minutes i get that but what we want is consistency and i know they do allude to it in the statement but banning var and getting scrapping it in its entirety is not the problem the technology is not the problem here it's the people that are using the technology it's the people that are behind the screens that are seemingly not paying attention to either the season that is, that, that is going on or they're not paying attention to the game itself. They're the people that are judging fouls based on the flip of a coin, it seems. They're the ones that are judging red cards based on the flip of a coin rather than go, well, that's the same challenge that we sent so-and-so off for last week. We should send this player off this week. That's not the case. What happens is, is it seems like they just flip a coin, like I say, and it seems that whatever it lands on is what they call and then what they call it on the pitch as. And what we have seen from referees is that they almost influence a decision because I get that human error can occur if there's no VAR. But VAR was brought in not to back up the referee, but to eradicate VA, but to eradicate human error from the referees themselves. If a referee, for whatever reason, has his view obstructed, if a referee, for whatever reason, wasn't seeing the game at, um, or wasn't seeing part of the game, that is VAR's turn to intervene and say, you weren't in this position, just go and have a look at this. You were, you were clearly obstructed by bodies being in the way. We think you've got it wrong. VAR, the technology, is not the problem. It's the people behind it. And it's not going to get any better. You scrap this, fine. You scrap it. We go back to how it used to be. There's human error that occurs on the pitch. We can somewhat accept it. But also, then again, we can't accept it. It doesn't eradicate the poor standards of officiating because although VAR, when it first came in, was brought in and there are some good moments, and there are still good, some good moments, the clear usage of it has been on the decline for years. And this season has probably been the most controversial and probably the most strangest and most weirdly decision-making uh, of VAR in its entirety in the Premier League. I can't, I can't talk for anybody else. I can't talk for any other league because um, I don't watch any other league in its entirety and uh, to the fullest extent that I do the Premier League, but I know from the Premier League that that has been the case. And I also know that refereeing standards have been on the decline as well. And they've been heavily influencing the people behind the screen that are meant to be trying to watch the game. We know that because when Howard Webb does his little show with Michael Owen... You can hear on the VAR audio several times referees go, he's, he's played the ball, he's played the ball, it's not a foul, it's not a foul, or words to that effect that, in my mind, would instantly um, inspire and also sort of sway the VAR's opinion to back up the referee on the pitch. So how is things? how are things going to get better in the modern game if we are just to take it at the referee's word? And also... The referees are not all there visually. Specsavers needs to run an ad campaign on some of these referees. I go back to a couple of weeks ago, the North London derby between Arsenal and Tottenham. The penalty that Tottenham won 
and Sun Young Min scored from to make it 3-2 in the final 10 minutes of the game was not spotted by referee Michael Oliver until it went to VAR. And on the replay, Michael Oliver is standing directly at it. He's staring directly at the incident where Declan Rice kicks the Tottenham player whose name escapes me. I can't actually remember who it was. But he kicks him. Michael Oliver is staring directly at it. And nothing was given in real time. It went to VAR. It got overturned. It was a decision that led to a penalty to Spurs. And it set up the final 10 minutes being 3-2 to Arsenal. That was a good usage of VAR. But if that's the kind of refereeing standards that we're going to have to use get used to now that VAR is not a safety net there to be, you know, sometimes we criticise it and sometimes we say, you know what, that's what VAR was brought in for. That was a good display by VAR there. We are in trouble. Because it's not just Wolves that have, have been dealt... Um, have been have been dealt very negatively by VAR. A lot of other teams have as well. My team, Liverpool, definitely has on a few occasions this season, as I'm sure Newcastle have, Brighton have, Forest definitely have, Chelsea have probably, United, um, Arsenal have on a, on a couple of occasions, Manchester City maybe once or twice. Everybody has been dealt a bad hand with VAR at one point or another. And that's not an excuse to say we should keep it. But it is an excuse to call out referees, to call out uh, PGMOL officials and go, this isn't the problem. The technology works. You just don't use it. You don't use it properly. You're not using your eyes properly. You're not applying common sense here. You're not doing any of these things that you said that VLR would set out to do when it was first introduced into the game. That's the problem that we have. And for me... It's not going to get any better. Whether you scrap VAR or not, it's not going to get any better until the officials book up their ideas. Until the rule and lawmakers of the game, you know, fully determine and make it a little bit more crystal clear as to what constitutes a foul. What isn't a foul? What's a red card? What isn't a red card? What's handball? What isn't handball? What is a penalty, what isn't a penalty, and so on and so forth. Because all of these things have major grey areas in that one week it's given, next week it's not. And I go back to my earlier point. It's like a lot of these decisions are being made on the flip of a coin. It really, really does at times. And anyone who's been following uh, me throughout this season, or even uh, across other seasons as well, will know that I've been trying to be as consistent as possible on calling out VAR decisions, calling out inconsistencies within the game. You get rid of VAR, there's going to be more inconsistencies. You get rid of VAR, there's going to be blatant penalties that are going to be missed even more so than what they were before. And I get the whole argument that it ruins the spontaneity and in-the-moment side of the game. But would you rather have clear accuracy... Or would you rather have this huge asterisk against a large majority of games which you could go, well, you know what? The referee missed a blatant penalty there. That could have changed the entirety of the game. The referee missed a blatant handball there. That could have changed the entirety of the game. I know it's bad now, but it's only bad because of the officials that we have. And like I say, with Wolves' comments on this, I understand a lot of where it's coming from. I understand the in-the-moment side of things, the goal celebrations, the moments that are somewhat taken away. I understand the lack of communication. I understand how it may not exactly make for a great atmosphere when, you know, the Premier League is being targeted with chance and VAR is targeted with chance. But at the same time, how are they supposed to learn if they don't, if we don't raise any sort of objection? That's my issue with it. If we, if we as fans don't raise an objection 
or any of the clubs raise an objection, how are officials going to get better? That's my overall point on this. It, it It's baffling to me. Like I say, some of the points that are made, I, I get. Some of the points, I think, have not been have not been met with wider eyes to see the bigger picture it's just it's an interesting topic it's an interesting debate it's something that obviously i think needs to be looked at a little bit more um and i and i'm very much intrigued next month when they all meet to discuss on this whether or not this passes the 14 teams uh, that want it to be scrapped it'd be very interesting to me if this is to be the case because for me like i say bottom line on this VAR is not the problem, but the officials well and truly are. And I think VAR is being made an scapegoat because of how bad the officials are. Uh, but anyway, those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of anything and everything that I talked about in regards to VAR? Should we see it scrapped? Should it stay? What are your thoughts on it? Should, uh, in your opinion, should we keep it? Should we scrap it? I want to know what you guys think and feel on this, people. Let me know down below in the comment section your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings. Whatever you want to call it will make for great and interesting reading, I'm sure. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated. And, of course, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see you speak with you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it is. Maybe. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm off to watch Man United against Newcastle. I'll speak to you all again very, very soon.